this is the only study method that actually works, not a trendy hack. It's backed by research, used by med students, and can save your grades. If you've been stuck highlighting, rereading, or watching endless lectures hoping it'll stick, this is your way out. You sit down to study. You reread your notes, highlight the textbook, maybe rewatch a lecture or two. It feels productive. It feels like you're learning. But here's the truth. You're not. These are passive techniques. They give the illusion of progress. But when the test comes, your mind goes blank. You forget most of what you tried to study. And it's not your fault. These are the methods most people are taught. But they don't help you retain anything long term. That's why your study sessions feel endless and still don't stick. Here's what nobody teaches you in school. Memory doesn't fade slowly. It fades fast. This graph, the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve, is based on actual experiments in cognitive psychology. It shows that after learning something once, you can forget over half of it within 24 hours and nearly all of it by the end of the week unless you actively do something about it. So even if you spend hours highlighting, watching tutorials, and rereading your notes, if you don't revisit that information the right way at the right time, your brain will quietly discard it. Why? Because passive review doesn't trigger retrieval. And retrieval is the key. When you read something, your brain processes it shallowly. It recognizes the words, it feels familiar, but it doesn't store it in long-term memory. It's like seeing someone's face at a party and forgetting their name five minutes later. Now contrast that with active recall, when you try to remember something without looking at the answer. That mental effort actually strengthens the neural pathway. It's called effortful retrieval, and it's one of the most powerful drivers of memory consolidation. This has been shown again and again in learning science. If you want to actually retain information, you have to struggle with it. You have to pull it out of your brain, and not just once, but at spaced intervals. That's how memory is built. This is the difference between knowing a concept today and being able to use it weeks or months later, when it actually matters. And the best part? Anyone can train this skill. You don't need more hours. You just need to study the right way. Let's talk about the most important shift you can make in how you study. It's not about how many hours you spend reading. It's about how often your brain has to reach for information, not just recognize it. Active recall is the process of forcing your brain to retrieve information from memory. No books, no notes, no hints. You ask yourself a question and try to answer it cold. Then, and only then, do you check the correct answer. It sounds simple. But this technique changes everything. When you passively reread a page, your brain treats that information like background noise. But when you struggle to recall something, your brain kicks into high gear. It starts building new pathways, literally reshaping itself to make that memory stronger and faster to access next time. This is called retrieval practice, and it's the foundation of durable, long-term learning. In one study, students who read a passage once and then tested themselves remembered far more than students who read it four times but never recalled it. The takeaway? Retrieval beats repetition. How to use active recall and actually make it work. 1. Flashcards. Write a question on one side, answer on the other. Look at the question. Try to answer it. Only flip the card after you've genuinely tried to recall. Use tools like Anki or Quizlet to make this effortless. 2. Blurting. Grab a blank sheet. Write down everything you can remember about a topic, with zero help. Then check your notes to see what you missed. It's fast, raw, and brutally effective. 3. Teaching out loud. Try explaining the concept to an imaginary student out loud without notes. The moment you stumble, that's what you don't know yet. That's what you need to fix. 4. Practice questions. Use past exams, textbooks, or online quizzes. Do them closed book, then grade yourself honestly. This is the closest thing to real performance and the fastest way to build confidence. What active recall is not? Most people think they're doing active recall when they're not. If you're looking at the answer while asking the question, that's recognition, not recall. If you're copying someone's summary or watching another video passively, that's not recall either. Your brain only learns when it has to work. The real secret, discomfort is a feature. Active recall doesn't feel easy. That's the point. The struggle to remember is not a sign you're failing. It's the exact moment your brain is doing its best work. The goal isn't to feel good while you're studying. It's to be ready when it counts, in the exam, in your career, in real life. If you can make one change in how you study, make this one. Learn to embrace recall. It's uncomfortable, but it's unforgettable. You've learned how to retrieve information with active recall. That's where learning starts. But to make that learning stick, to turn short-term wins into long-term retention, you need the second pillar, spaced repetition. Think of it like compound interest, but for memory. The more you space your reviews, the longer and deeper the memory holds. What is spaced repetition and why does it work? Memory doesn't just disappear all at once. 
it fades slowly, then rapidly. But every time you review a concept right before you're about to forget it, you reignite that memory. You send your brain a signal. This matters. Keep it. And the brain listens. It strengthens the neural pathway, the neuroscience behind it. Each time you retrieve and reinforce a memory, a process called long-term potentiation kicks in. This is when the synapses between neurons become more efficient. Repetition isn't enough. The spacing is what trains the brain to hold on. One key reason spacing works is because of desirable difficulty. When you space reviews out, remembering becomes harder, and that's a good thing. The struggle to recall is what rewires the brain most effectively. A simple manual spacing system, no app needed. You don't need software to use space repetition. Here's a simple schedule you can start today. Day one, learn the topic. Day two, active recall session, blurting, flashcards, or teaching. Day four, review again, same method. Day seven, quick test, low effort but honest. Day 14, reinforcement review, more selective. Day 30, Final check-in, spot gaps. It's not about going over everything again. Focus on weak points, what you couldn't remember last time. That's how you use time efficiently. Using tech to automate the process. If you want to save time, Anki is the gold standard. It's free and it's smart. When you answer a card, you rate how easy or hard it was to recall. Anki schedules the next review based on that response, so harder cards come back sooner and easier ones show up less often. That's called an adaptive spaced algorithm, and it mirrors how your brain actually learns. If it feels too good to be true, try it. Medical students around the world swear by it. If you like designing your own system, tools like Notion or Obsidian let you build custom review trackers. Add dates, tags, intervals, and space your topics manually, or just go and Analog. Use a physical calendar or a printable review log. Simplicity still works, as long as you're consistent. Avoid the spacing mistakes. There are two major ways students mess this up, without realizing. One, reviewing too often. They go over the same notes every day, fearing they'll forget, but they never give the brain time to almost forget, which is where spacing is powerful. Two, waiting too long. They cram once, then never come back. That's not spacing. That's abandoning the memory before it stabilizes. The trick is to find the edge of forgetting, the point where it feels uncomfortable but not impossible. That's your sweet spot. How to combine it with active recall, the formula. Here's how the system works together. Learn the topic, recall it actively the next day, space out the next retrieval, repeat at increasing intervals, focus reviews on what you forget most in. It's not magic, it's not a hack. It's just how your brain was built to learn through challenge, repetition, and time. Think of your brain like a muscle. You don't get stronger by doing bicep curls every hour. You do them, then rest, then do them again at the right time. That's how growth happens. Space repetition is your rest recall cycle. And when paired with active recall, it's the most powerful tool in all of studying. Now that your viewers understand the science and structure, it's time to show them how it all comes together in real life. This section makes it tangible, relatable, and doable. So they walk away thinking, I can do this starting tonight. Let's pull this all together and see what it looks like in real study sessions. I'll walk you through a few examples. So whether you're in high school, med school, law school, or prepping for an exam like the IELTS, you can see how to make this method work for you. Let's say you're studying mitosis and meiosis. On day one, you read the chapter and highlight key terms. But instead of reviewing that same night, you create flashcards. The next morning, you review those cards with active recall, covering the answer, struggling to remember, then checking. You rate how hard each one was. Anki will then schedule the next review for each card automatically, maybe in two days, five days, or a week, depending on how well you knew it. That's spaced repetition in action. You're learning key cases or statutes. You don't just reread your notes. Instead, you grab a whiteboard and write out everything you can remember about consideration in contract law. That's blurting, pure active recall. You identify gaps, go back to the textbook, then write a mini case summary flashcard set. Each day, you return to the the flashcards based on a review schedule, focusing most on the ones you struggled with. That's efficient, targeted review, not rereading everything. Studying cranial nerves, you're not drawing them once. You're drawing them from memory, repeatedly, day after day, spaced out by your performance. Flashcards with clinical scenarios, same method. One recall attempt, spaced intelligently. Say you're reading a theory-heavy chapter on Piaget's cognitive stages. After reading, close the book and write down, in your own words, what each stage is. Then try explaining it out loud. That's active recall. Next, schedule reviews for that topic. Blurting again in two days, then again in five. Focus only on what you couldn't recall the first time. The point isn't the subject, it's the pattern. You can apply this method to any subject. The material changes, the structure doesn't. Learn, recall it yourself, space out your reviews, 
focus on your weak points. That's the formula. It's repeatable. It's scalable. It works. If this feels overwhelming, don't try to build the perfect system on day one. Start with one chapter. Create 10 flashcards. Try blurting just once. Build a simple review calendar in your planner or Notion. Once you feel the difference, once you realize you actually remember what you studied, the motivation will take care of itself. Let's bring it all home. You don't need more hours in the day. You don't need perfect notes, aesthetic planners, or a miracle memory. You need one thing, a method that works with how your brain actually learns. That method is simple. Learn it once, recall it without looking, space it out over time, repeat until it sticks. It's not flashy, it's not fast, but it works, and it will save you from wasting time on techniques that only feel productive. The students who get ahead, the ones who retain more in less time, who walk into exams calm instead of panicked, they're not working harder. They're just working smarter with the exact method you've just learned. If you take just one thing from this video, let it be this. You don't learn by reviewing. You learn by remembering. So give your brain what it needs and watch what happens.